This is Dave McKenna's take on the fall favorite, a salmon and steelhead pattern that's been around for decades. It's rather easy to tie, and with the addition of some super glue and UV resin, it can be fairly durable. For a hook, Dave's going to use a Daiichi number 2441 in a size 4. It's a 1x strong traditional salmon steelhead hook. To keep bulk to a minimum, Dave loads a bobbin with a spool of red Vivas 12 aught thread. Get your thread started on the hook shank right at the back end of the return, and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. Continue taking wraps down the shank to build up a nice, even thread base for the body of the fly. End with your tying thread a short distance in front of the hook point. Red, medium-sized hollow tinsel is used to create the butt of the fly. A short length is all that's required. Snip one end of the material off at a shallow angle and lay the tip against the near side of the hook. Then, take a few thread wraps to secure it. Advance your tying thread forward to allow for five slightly overlapping wraps of tinsel. Once the wraps are complete, anchor the tinsel with two or three turns of tying thread, then snip the excess off close. Medium-sized gold-silver mylar tinsel is used for the body of the fly. A six-inch length is plenty. Again, snip one end off at a shallow angle, and secure that end gold side out to the near side of the hook shank. Then, advance your tying thread forward to the start of the return. Begin taking wraps with the mylar. During the first wrap, it should fold over, silver side out. Continue taking overlapping wraps up the hook shank to create a nice, even, smooth body on the fly. Secure the tinsel just shy of the hook return with a few wraps of tying thread. Carefully snip the excess off close and take a few more thread wraps to really lock it down. To increase durability, if you'd like, apply a thin coat of UV Cure resin over top of your work thus far and cure it with a UV torch. Small Arctic UV chenille in orange is used for the thorax of the fly. A little more than an inch is all that's needed. Lay one end of the material against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to secure it. A silver pheasant feather that's been dyed red is used for the throat of the fly. With the shiny side of the feather facing you, strip all but the tip fibers from the left-hand side of the stem. Then, get rid of most of the fuzzy fibers from the right. Pull down on the remaining fibers to expose the feather's tip, then secure it to the hook shank with a few turns of tying thread. You can then lift the excess up and snip it off close. Run the back of your scissors along the near side of the stem to help fold the fibers rearward. Advance your tying thread up onto the hook return for a short distance. Then, take wraps with the chenille to that point and anchor it with just a wrap or two of tying thread. You can then snip the excess off close. To increase durability, apply a very thin coat of super glue to the feather's bare stem. Then, start making open spiral wraps with the feather, angling the fibers rearward as you go. Three to four turns should be plenty. Use your tying thread to anchor the stem, then snip the excess off close. Preen the fibers evenly to either side of the hook to produce a narrow little landing pad on top of the hook shank for the wing of the fly. Take a few more wraps of tying thread rearward to keep the fibers correctly oriented. Orange colored arctic fox is used to create the wing of the fly. A small clump is all you need. After snipping the fur free from the hide, use a fine tooth comb to completely remove the under fur from the butts, otherwise some of the fur might pull free. Measure to form a wing about a hook shank and a half in length, then use tight wraps of tying thread to anchor the fur clump to the top of the hook. Lift the butt ends up and take a couple of wraps with your tying thread beneath them around just the hook shank and the return. Using the very tips of your tying scissors, snip the excess butt ends off as close as possible. From here on out, it's important to keep thread wraps to a minimum in order to create a small, nicely shaped head on the fly. Orange colored Senyo's UV Predator Wrap is used for the fly's overwing. 20 or so strands are all that's needed. Position the strands so the tips extend about a quarter inch aft of the wing tips. Then, use your tying thread to secure the predator wrap on top of the hook shank. Once again, take a wrap beneath the material before snipping the excess off close. Ideally, you want the predator wrap spread evenly so it kind of surrounds the arctic fox wing. 
Being careful to keep thread wraps to a minimum, build up a short little head on the fly, just enough so materials aren't peeking through. Dave likes to leave the head of the fly back from the hook eye a bit, for that classic space for a turl knot look. Complete the head with a 4 or 5 turn whip finish and snip your tying thread free. Thin UV cure resin can be used to create a nice, neat, durable, and shiny head on the fly. Use just enough to coat the thread wraps, then give the resin a healthy shot of UV light to cure it. With your fingertips or a fine tooth comb, preen and spread all the materials into position. Your goal is a teardrop shape for the wing with the red pheasant fibers spread around the bottom of the fly for the throat. And that's Dave McKenna's take on the fall favorite. His pattern has really proven itself over the last few years on New York Salmon River. It's fooled not only kings, but cohos, steelhead, and brown trout as well. <laughs>